All right, should I get going? Cool. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm James. I'm a kernel and hypervisor engineer for Amazon EC2. And today I'd like to have the discussion around the topic of memory management of virtual machines and live updates. That is the ability to boot into a new kernel via KExec, restart um, all new versions of user space processes while um, preserving and restoring the state of the running virtual machines after KExec, after live update. Specifically here, the focus will be on the memory management aspect. Um, that's kind of part of the discussion that, uh, as part of the discussion, I'm gonna introduce this concept of Muse, memory management in user space as a file system, which should hopefully provide some of the memory management capabilities we need to be able to support live update. So roughly what we'll be looking at is just an overview of what live update involves and some of would involve in some of the uh, memory management requirements and then look at some ways we could, some possible options for solving it, uh, specifically a fully in-kernel managed approach or a user space managed approach, and then go into some details about how that um, suggested file system in user space with memory management controls could work to support li um, live updates. So live update essentially involve, would involve um, serializing existing running virtual machines, pausing the vCPUs, k-execing into a new kernel, starting up new user space VMM processes, like a new version of QMU or that kind of thing, deserializing your vCPUs and then resuming them running from where they left off. So the same guest instruction pointer values, same guest registers, all that sort of thing. And the requirements here are that we need to persist guest memory and state across this process so that it's able to resume from where it left off. This isn't exactly snapshot and restore, and the reason is that we actually want to start a new user space binary, new version of QMU, which potentially structures things slightly differently. Um, it's just that virtual machine state that we want to um, persist. So just to get a feel for some of the memory requirements, trying to get a bit of a flavor for what could be involved here, the basic case would be we want to allocate a virtual machine with a chunk of memory, maybe you want to give it eight gigabytes of RAM, pre-allocate all of that memory, and then after live update, be able to restore that same memory to the virtual machine. It should also be possible to do things like memory over subscription, so dynamically mapping and unmapping pages uh, on demand as needed, including potentially host swap and um, making that swap state survive across live updates as well. Um, and also delivering faults to user space for things like migration, um, potentially um, keeping IOMMU page tables persisted so that any in-flight DMA can continue across this live update, um, potentially slicing up MMIO regions and even carving out portions of memory from an existing virtual machine to spawn a new sidecar virtual machine. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of give a flavor of some of the potential intricacies and complexities that are necessary in memory management to provide a sort of comprehensive um, virtualization solution. So yeah, there's a lot of dynamicism here and whatever we sort of look at to solve the problem needs to be able to cater for these sort of techniques. Broadly, I think there are two ways that we could do this. The one would be a fully in-kernel um, managed solution where the kernel would construct all of the state using traditional allocators and then pass it from the old kernel to the new kernel uh, as part of the k-exec process. Um, something like PKRAM, which was an RFC, was proposed for this sort of topic. I'm oh, sorry, you, just to be clarified, you, you're talking about the guest kernel here rather than the host kernel. I'm talking about the host kernel. So, so, so um, k-exec, this live update process, is about you want to update your hypervisor. You want to update to a new version of your Linux hypervisor kernel plus new VMM processes like a new QMU, for example. And the whole point here is you want this to actually be as transparent as possible to the guest. So aside from a short blip in um, execution time when this update process is happening, it should, it should be frozen and then resume from exactly where it left off and almost not notice that your hypervisor has updated. That is the live update process. 
so I have a question. Um, what is the reason behind updating the QMU as well at the same time when you do the kernel upgrade, um, as opposed to just you know upgrading kexec your kernel and then using uh, QMU upgrade processes? Hmm. That's a. I guess it's a reasonable question. Um, I think we've just been looking at your your kernel and your user space processes as kind of your hypervisor in one package, and you want to be able to go from old version of hypervisor, which is combination of kernel and user space, to new version as a kind of atomic update. But I guess uh, another reasonable approach would be to think of these as separate operations. I'm not sure if that is necessarily better or worse as opposed to just- I think it's free. Down. Like w once you update kernel, uh, it's free to also update the QMU. Yeah. Or any other I mean, the reason for doing this in the first place is bugs, right? Kernel has bugs, QMU has bugs, you want to update both. Yeah, I think the question was, do you need to do them together in one go? Yeah, why bundle it, you know? Right now we do, because otherwise we'd have to store all the KVM and vCPU state in the kernel in order that QMU or the VMM can keep running, right? Yeah. As it is, we serialize all the state as if for live migration, and then we yeah. k-executive the new kernel, and resume that state from memory, from the memory that is being persistent. Mm. That's why we're here. But at least QMU is then essentially doing a resume, a live migration resume. It's just live right. migration in time instead of space, right? It's not going to a different box. Yeah. But if you want to talk about the vCPUs persisting in kernel state such that QMU is still attached to the magically via existing file descriptors, that's a lot harder, right? We're not talking about keeping no, not talking about checkpoint restore and keeping mm. existing user space processes running in the next kernel at all, right? There, I did read about some prior art for QMU live updating, where you keep the same kernel and you go from old QMU to new QMU. So that is a potential approach to decouple them. Uh, but then you're still left with the kernel update process. Sure, so you kind of, yeah. And that's the same thing, right? That is serialized state and then resume, as if you've done a live migration. It's just that you're right. you know, shown a new version of QMU. Yeah. Yeah, I think the trick there is that you want to maintain your kernel memory when upgrading uh, your your VM memory when upgrading QMU is that you just use shared memory as a file, like a file back shared memory, and you just give it a new VM and you restore everything else, but the VM mem VM memory essentially gets uh, yeah. So the so file upgrading QMU is easy, um, like upgrading your kernel is the hard part. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so you mentioned fileback memory, which is kind of where I'm going with this, but you need that fileback memory to survive across this k-exec process, so you can't use something like traditional tempfs or something like that. But on that topic, that's what this PK RAM thing suggest, um, proposal suggested, which is basically like tempfs but with persistence. And ex other state like IOMMU page tables and all that stuff could also potentially be passed from old kernel to new kernel. Zen does this through using breadcrumbs. Um, and the advantage of an approach that's fully kernel managed is it's probably faster than the other option, which is the user space control. But I think it's a lot more complex to get something like PKRAM right and to get all the state handed over from old kernel to new kernel and re-plugged into the correct places when your new user space processes start up. I think it becomes very complicated. So the other option here is to have this, uh, your state re-driven into your new kernel um, after uh, k-exec by user space and basically make user space uh, in control of a lot of the things that you need to persist. And so, yeah, the suggestion here is basically around providing a file system type interface which is backed by non-kernel um, managed memory. So it's backed by what you can call persistent memory, memory that's, um, out, that's outside of the kernel allocators, which is where we can put everything that we need to survive across k-exec versus your what we'll call ephemeral memory, that's what's managed by the kernel. And um, that get all the ephemeral memory gets recreated and restarted um, after your k-exec and your new processes start up. Okay, so I'm suggest we're suggesting a file system type approach here where user space would be able to program all of the necessary mappings and configuration and all that sort of thing into this um, file system 
uh, from user space through IO controls and that sort of thing, and we could store arbitrary types of data in here. We could store some files for guest memory, some for some KVM state, some for page tables, all that kind of thing. Um, so is this just a traditional file system on top of something like DAX? Like, can you just use ext4 on top of a DAX device? I think that's that would become challenging to try and use a traditional file system, especially to try and expose those the semantics around some of those more complicated or exotic things that I mentioned, like slicing up PCI bars or memory over commit with swap. Those are sort of things that would be really difficult to expose in a traditional file system and similarly like page tables and that sort of thing. So I would suggest a new sort of file system that is designed with this use case in mind, specifically storing state that uh, needs to be rehydrated possibly into the kernel like page tables um, across KXF. So this idea was floated at LSFMM earlier this year and we got some feedback there that said that this user space approach does seem preferable rather than trying to build the complexity into the kernel. So based on that feedback, I'm kind of looking at um, expanding on the concept a bit now um, and trying to get uh, yeah, a more like fleshed out idea. So where am I? Yeah, th that's some of the justification. I think I've mentioned that already. Um, Avoiding complexity, giving user space the ability to have policy and to evolve kind of independently. Kernel provides mechanism, user space provides policy and actually sets everything up and restores it after a uh, live update. So I think I've kind of hinted at this already, but this is roughly the suggestion. So you carve out a large chunk of your host memory um, from to not be kernel managed through something like an MMAP command line parameter. And that is then your persistent memory. I've labeled it guest memory, but your persistent memory and everything else that's not carved out is your ephemeral memory managed by the kernel. You could then um, mount a mount this Muse file system, memory management and user space file system, and set it to have a be backed by this memory which you've carved out from the kernel. And that would then allow you to, well, you as in user space to program mappings from files into PFNs from that uh, guest memory. And there would essentially be a concept of a control process here, which is your memory management and user space control that would be responsible for creating the files, programming in, in mappings, deciding which client process, like which QMU gets what memory, and then imp importantly, re-driving that into the kernel after kexec so that these files get the same mappings as they had before. I Your have a question about uh, this uh, partitioning. Uh, so, as I understand, the partitioning can be done using uh, the uh, emulated persistent memory. But uh, my question is: uh, at the beginning, you mentioned the overcommit uh, as one of the problems that needs to be solved. Hmm. Uh, so how overcommit can be solved is if guest memory is not managed by kernel. Is it like completely managed by user space? Sure. So what you could do is treat a large portion of that persistent memory block as a communal pool almost. And your control process could get faults when a guest accesses memory that it hasn't accessed before. And then in response to that fault, your, your control process could program in a new mapping to a file that says that faulting address is now backed by this PFN from that pool. So your control process would act as an allocator responsible for driving mappings into the kernel. And it would then, the important thing is it would need to redrive those mappings in after live update, or they would need to be persisted across KXEC. So basically uh, com completely manage uh, the uh, guest VM memory in the user space, of course. That's right. Yeah. So you, the user space component would be responsible for making these mapping decisions and be able to replay those mappings after KXX. All the kernel ephemeral mappings are lost and only the important ones for actual that you need to preserve like guest memory mappings would be persistent. No swapping support. Say again? No swap support. You could absolutely have swap support here. So one, the way you could do something like that 
is your user space control process could decide to swap out some memory and it could write it off to somewhere else and then it could record in its own internal state that mem that memory from that file is now somewhere else it, and it sounds like it's re-implementation everything that the kernel already has it's not i wouldn't say it's everything i mean kernel management is ex is you know there's a lot of complexity no, no, i mean uh, in terms of uh, memory allocation and stuff there, I mean, there is definitely overlap with kernel memory allocations and swap in path and all that sort of thing. But the idea is to separate what we need to be persistent. Um, those mappings need to be persisted across KExec. The other ones for like your traditional anonymous memory space for processes don't. Yeah. But that is, I mean, why I kind of said they are like two ways of doing it, where you could get your kernel allocator to be fully responsible, but then you need to pass over all that state. All those mappings, all that swap information, and that's where I think the real complexity of this comes. What I was thinking is like uh, to allow uh, leverage kernel uh, allocator mm. to still use this guest memory. So basically, but not for anything else except for like the guest memory. So, uh, just, uh, so w w w like the first partition is the general purpose kernel memory. And the rest is uh, like only a, a guest memory allocation, but still managed by kernel. Right, but so I think it would be a new type of persistent memory for kernels, basically. Yeah, a new device. I think that the, yeah, that is definitely an, an approach, but I think the complexity starts coming in of how do you pass those mappings across? How do you pass all those allocations? Things like what has been swapped out where. Um, from old kernel to new kernel. Don't you end up implementing something like breadcrumbs? Where are your, you know. Any thoughts, David? The breadcrumb thing works in Zen. The way that happens is that you need to give a boot allocation um, to the new Zen, to the new mm -hmm. kernel, right? So the breadcrumb ends up um, Sort of giving you access to a list of the pages that are already in use and that yeah. contains a data stream which you can format how you like right and it can include all that metadata to tell you what goes where mm -hmm. right so it can have page tables and ultimately you just have a your main stream can have a pointer to the root of page tables from which you can find everything else mm -hmm. right and then the body allocator only ever gets given the pages that aren't already in use right and that's how you populate the rest of memory and then all these pages that have been allocated and persisted, well, when they eventually get free, if they eventually get freed, well, they just get freed and they, everything just works out perfectly. But you need a certain amount of memory for the kernel to start using an early boot. And so you have to have a separate zone of memory from which thou shalt never allocate anything you want to persist, right? Yeah. So, and that's easy enough, right? Certain allocations can come from that boot mem because we know that those are never going to be persisted to the yeah. next. It's easy enough in Zen, certainly, we want to achieve that. I think just coming back to the, the question of, you know, should we be using the existing kernel allocated? I, well, I, I haven't attempted to prototype that, but I think it, I can imagine it gets really complicated when you need your allocators to sometimes allocate from this like persistent memory pool and sometimes from ephemeral pools and trying to get the kernel allocators to know about these different pools of memory and pass that state across? I, I mean, like, the, 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 the thing I didn't like about uh, PKRAM was that it was doing exactly that. It was like that the system had available, let's say, eight, giga, eight gigabytes of memory, and then you pass something to boot and said, yeah, well, leave that out, leave that out, leave that out. That's just the ugly way of doing that. I, I yeah. agree with that. I also didn't like PKRAM because it was partitioned, like, uh, you could get, like, a sparse list, and then you have... Um, uh, issue on the next boot. Yeah, yeah uh, we still can do yeah, the exactly, and that, that's what I'm trying to say here. Is like you now say, like, let's do it completely in user space. Why not do a sub, some kind of a split? Like, you just have to set away a huge area of memory reserved for whatever purpose, yeah. and you can pass it on there. And uh, maybe I'm daydreaming, but I think there was a proposal on the memory management list recently how you can online the hot plug memory from from DAX while keeping some of the pages 
already allocated. I'm not sure if that was from, from one of you, you guys working on that, but it was essentially trying to do that. Like you would, you would rip out a certain big portion of main memory and you would dedicate that completely to some kind of kernel file system that would handle the bootstrapping of the boot, like picking out what is actually located in the file system, which blocks. And then it would simply go ahead and free back all of the free memory in that area back to the body allocator. The only thing you would have to teach the system is then that you, you have some kind of these files, they're only allowed to allocate from this certain memory region, and you could either do that by a fake NUMA node or some additional zone in the body allocator that is not getting used for anything else. But I think you could repurpose most of the infrastructure. The only thing where it gets difficult is swapping, but I'm not sure if you should be worrying about that at this point, because it makes the whole thing so much more complicated. If you have like then again, you have a swap device, kernel comes up, tries to reuse it, so you have to steal back again all of these like individual bits and pieces. So then yeah. you might want to implement swapping in user space if it's possible to some degree. But... I, I think, yeah, I, I agree with uh, basically everything you're saying, you know, and when you try to do these more um, advanced memory management things, you know, I think the trying to do it in the kernel and, pers and persist that and pass that across is going to start creaking pretty soon. If you want to do simple things like I want to allocate a page, but you know, what about things like you want to allocate gigabyte pages instead of 4K pages? You want to choose, oh, I'm going to allocate large chunks of memory to improve TLB performance and all that sort of thing. And that's kind of, am I being, what's, how's the time situation? Minus one. Minus one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, in that case, I'll end off. Um, thanks for the discussion. I hope we can have some more discussions in the hallway. Thank you.